Hi everybody and welcome back to another edition of the Otalo Office 365 Insider with me Mark Stokes. Thank you for joining me again today. As usual we're going to go through what's changing on the Office 365 platform over the last week so you're fully up to date and know how to support your users and your customers. Okay, so what we do, um, as usual, is we're going to look at the message center items. So we'll look at what issues are currently present on my own tenant, and then we can have a look at what issues have been resolved over the last week. So you always know what's going on in the environment. Now, do bear in mind that this is in my environment only. So if you're in a different um, subsection of Office 365, you may some, see some different issues. But it gives you an overview of generally what's happening on the platform, so it should be useful. After that, we're going to go and have a look at um, what's changing in the roadmap. So what items have finished rolling out over the last week, what items have gone into a rolling out status over the last week, and which items are currently in development to give you a slightly longer term view of what's happening. The good thing is if you follow this week by week, then you're in a better position to support your customers and your users um, throughout the usage of Office 365. It's a very fast, uh, very fast changing platform, so it's good to be aware of what's happening. So we don't have an awful lot to get through today, which is quite nice. So um, what we'll do, we'll jump straight in. Um, I hope I don't need to keep you longer than half an hour today. Um, so we'll jump straight through and we'll look at the message center items that are currently present. So I've got eight issues currently in my tenant um, and we'll run through what they are. So first of all, any user may see unexpected layout in Outlook on the web light mode. Um, that's been going on since the 11th of August. Um, some users can't see videos or screen sharing from remote participants. This is uh, relating to Microsoft Teams. Um, this has been going on since the 10th of August, the last few days. So users may be unable to see videos or screen sharing from remote participants when using the Microsoft Teams service. Some users are unable to create and access folders in their archive. Uh, that's Exchange Online. That's been going on since the 3rd of August. Um, OneDrive for Business, uh, search results may not return as expected. Now we've seen search issues over the last couple of weeks, so uh, this seems to be uh, ongoing for a while. Um, Microsoft Power Automate, any admin may be unable to see some custom connectors in Power Automate. Shipper Online, search results may not return as expected. We typically search, see search entries for uh, OneDrive and also for um, SharePoint Online um, consistently. We also use the same services. Um, and this one's been going on for a little while. Users in China um, can't play back live events in Microsoft Stream or Streams, as the incident says. Any user or admin may experience various issues intermittently when using the service. This is for Exchange Online. And that's all the current issues we've got. I've got to be honest, I'm not necessarily experiencing these myself, uh, so that's quite nice. They seem to be slightly hidden, but they are present there. So we've also had 11 items closed um, over the last week. Um, what these are. So all, uh, Skype for Business, all admins seen delays in call analytics and call quality dashboard reporting. Again, we often see reporting issues in here, so I hope that's something Microsoft does get and long going forward. Um, Number two, all admins seen delays in call analytics and quality dashboards. Okay, so that's the same one duplicated. Um, users surf through Western United States infrastructure, can't sign into, upload a video or play back a video in Microsoft Stream. Uh, that went on for just a couple of hours, uh, or, you know, about four or five hours uh, on the 12th of August. Um, Shepard Online, all users may be unable to access second level submenu links in the navigation bar of SharePoint Online sites. Uh, that was for yeah, just a couple of hours again. Um, number five, all users can't access Microsoft Forms or forms to Uh This was yeah, about an hour or less than an hour, half an hour there, so uh, a short blip in the service. Some new, uh, Microsoft Teams, some users may have been unable to see present status of other users in Microsoft Teams. Uh, that was effective again, just a couple of hours. So nice, nice short incidents here, which is quite nice to see, uh, getting fixed and resolved. Uh, pretty quick. Um, all admins unable to see all audit log results for July the 25th, 2020 or later in the Security and Compliance Center. Uh, this is actually a false positive. So a false positive means that it was reported, but it proves out to not actually be an issue. So any user may be experiencing delays of over 60 minutes when sending email messages. Uh, so this uh, was going on for a few days. I think we actually saw this one last week. Um, so sometimes we may not be getting emails through as, as quick as we might like. Um, Cortana daily briefing email not delivered. Uh, it's went on for quite a while actually, nearly a month. Some users may not receive my analytics digest emails. Uh, this went on again for, for nearly a month. 
Finally, any user, uh, sorry, Microsoft Teams, any user may have experienced intermittent issues when opening non-Microsoft Office file links from the web app. So you may have seen those issues as well. Uh, that went on from the 15th of July to the 7th of August. Okay, so nice and short. Um, that's not too many items in the, um, in the list. So hopefully that's a, a, a nice, easy one. So if we jump into the roadmap items now, and let's have a look, uh, nothing's been cancelled, which is good. So we have 15 items that have completed rolling out and have entered the launch status in the last week. Eight items have entered the rolling out state, uh, phase, and 13 items have gone into development. Um, it's important to notice here that um, what we're talking about is new items in these categories. We don't go through every single item in that category every week. Um, so you do need to watch every week to keep an update on what's going on. It just keeps it nice and short so we know what's changing. Okay. So if we jump back in and we can have a look. So 15 launched items. These should be now visible across all tenants across the whole of Office 365. So for Microsoft Teams, uh, we have an improved Improved Teams Meeting Join Launcher Experience for GCC customers. Uh, we spoke about this last week, so the, uh, the, the Join link uh, will now see an optimized and improved Join experience. Uh, users will be prompted with an option to join on the web, download the Teams client, or join with native Teams client. Okay, and that's our rolled into GCC. We've seen that at standard tenants already. Uh, Microsoft 365 Admin Center, Exchange Online Basic Authentication Settings. So Microsoft are adding Exchange Online basic authentication settings to the Microsoft Admin Center. And this will enable an administrator, uh, excuse me, this will enable an administrator to easily disable basic authentication within their tenant. New Yammer home feed. Um, this feature will soon be leaving preview as part of the new Yammer. Uh, please see roadmap item 65410 for more details. Um, so the new Yammer home feed should now be available across all Yammer tenants um, worldwide. Microsoft Teams, private channels for Office 365 government tenants. Uh, so we've been enjoying private um, channels for a while in, in regular tenants. Um, we use them fairly extensively. I quite like them. Uh, uh, there's some different opinions on how they've been impl implemented, but it definitely works for us. So that's coming to GCC now, which is nice. Uh, Microsoft Information Protection support for exact data match for the government clouds. Microsoft Teams improvements in meetings experience for Safari browser users. I've got to be honest, I've been using Safari a little bit more on my uh, my Mac, and um, I like how the browsers come along. So Microsoft are bringing improvements to the browser-based meetings experience for those who join Teams meetings with Safari browsers. Users will no longer be required to use audio conferencing to dial into the meeting for audio needs, but rather can use their device to speak and listen. Uh, the Office mobile apps will be available for Office 365 F1 and G1 for US government customers. Microsoft Teams. Uh, group calling for Safari browser, so related to the, um, the previous item. Uh, SharePoint listen libraries, bulk edit your list items in, and file properties in the form. Uh, so this is across everything actually. People will be able to select multiple items in their edit. Uh, sorry, you, people will be able to select multiple items and edit their list items or documents, properties all at once from the default form. That is something I've been waiting for for a very, very long time. SharePoint listen libraries. Open a list or document library item within the view form from Quick Edit. That'll be good. Um, I like where Quick Edit's going. The Quick Edit experience is getting better and better, so giving more functionality to, to work from there is going to be good. Uh, SharePoint list, create a new list item via a form in Quick Edit. SharePoint list and libraries, create all column types directly within Quick, uh, quick Edit. So that's nice. So we've been able to uh, add columns in Quick Edit, so now um, all the different column types are available to, to add new columns uh, from the Quick Edit view. Microsoft Forms, uh, specific user sharing for collaboration for GCC, GCC High, and DoD. So uh, specific user sharing for collaboration is a new Office 365 feature that allows form owners to collaborate with specific users or security groups. And this allows uh, the creation of specified co-authors that can help design the form and view analyze response data and allows the form owner to keep the collaboration locked down much further than using the existing collaboration styles users with Office 365 work or squad account can view and edit or only users in my organization can view and edit. And Microsoft uh, will gradually, but have now completed, rolling this out to worldwide Office 365 um, customers. 
uh, SharePoint list, a uh, new hyperlink field editor in Quick Edit. Uh, improve user experience for the admin center message center. So Microsoft are updating the message center page to have an improved user experience and the new experience will offer a new clean UI as well as performance improvements. So that'll be very welcome. Okay, so that's everything that's completed rolling out and you should now see all of those items in your tenants. So next we can go to the uh, to the rolling out. And as I said, these are items that have started to roll out to tenants but may not be completed yet. So it could take a few days, a week, a couple of weeks, a month, three months to actually get out to all tenants across the whole Office 365 platform. So you may or may not see these yet. But these ones are imminently landing if they're not there currently. And you should be able to uh, prepare your users uh, for when they, they come in. So if we jump into these, we've got eight of these. Uh, so Microsoft Information Protection, uh, Microsoft 365 Endpoint Data Loss Prevention. So DLP extends the activity monitoring and protection capabilities of DLP to sens sensitive items that are on Windows 10 devices. And once devices are onboarded into device management, the information about what users are doing with sensitive items is made visible in Activity Explorer and you can enforce pr uh, protective actions on those items via DLP policies. Microsoft Teams, uh, using Teams background images in non-optimized virtual desktop infrastructure environments. Outlook for Windows, store settings in the cloud. Uh, this is great, I'm, I'm quite liking this stuff. Um, a new option found under the general cloud storage options that allows users to choose if they would like to store their Outlook settings in the cloud. This will enable a number of capabilities such as privacy settings and focus inbox to be consistent if they use Outlook on multiple computers and eventually Outlook on the web and mobile. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this one. Um, I use lots of different devices, so um, I, I like to have consistency across all of those without having to manually set it, so that's very welcome. SharePoint, cumulative analytics for hubs in SharePoint. So hub owners can now analyze aggregate usage analytics for their SharePoint hub sites, including all associated sites. Uh, go to the site usage page for a hub site will automatically display usage data, including total visits, unique viewers, etc., for all associated sites in the hub. Azure Active Directory preview, AAD application proxy now supports the remote desktop services web client. Uh, Outlook on the web, reply with a file. So uh, Microsoft is add are adding a new option to the suggested replies in Outlook. Uh, I've viewed my opinions on them, that in the past. I'm not entirely sure if I like it for emails or not. Uh, so now when somebody asks you for a file, Outlook will show a suggested reply to attach a file and recommend potential files on OneDrive and SharePoint. That I think actually could be quite useful. I'm quite keen to see, see that. Um, Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection, preset security policies for EIP and Office 365 ATP security. I'm not going to read all that. I'll leave it there if you want to read it. SharePoint Listen Libraries, a uh, new rich text editor for text fields. Uh, so Microsoft are bringing a newer, richer experience when a person creates a multi-line text field for a SharePoint Listen Library. And they now uh, will have the option to enable rich text editor and when people edit their items in a form, they see a pencil icon uh, to edit text and adjust font size, color highlight, bold italics, underline, etc., etc. Um, that's good. Um, I've not been a big fan of the new rich text editor in um, the modern experience, so hopefully this is a, a, an improved version of that. Um, okay, good. Moving on. So. That's uh, all the new items that you can expect to see coming through quite soon. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move into the um, into the in-development items. So this is the stuff that Microsoft has started working on. So we may not see this for a while, if at all. They could still get pulled um, later on if uh, if they're not pruned, uh, if they don't prove popular. But this gives you a slightly longer term view of what's going on on the environment so that you can actually go and prepare your users accordingly again. Uh, so we've got 13 items that have entered the uh, category. So if we jump in, we can have a quick look at these. Um, so Microsoft Teams, private channels in Office 365 government tenants. Great, we know about private channels so far. So we, um, that's coming to GCC, which is nice. Um, VDI support for VMware Horizon, so Microsoft are delivering an optimized audio, vis video, and screen, sh screen, oh, easy for me to say. Microsoft are delivering an optimized audio, video, and screen sharing media experience for Microsoft Teams for VMware Horizon for on-premises cloud, Azure hosted uh, VDI environments. Android on-demand chat translation, 
So inline message translation will ensure that every worker in the team has a, a, a voice and facilitate global collaboration. With a simple click, people who speak different languages can fluidly communicate with one another by translating posts in channels and chat. Uh, this feature will be uh, will now be available on Android. I love this um, on-demand translation stuff. Um, we've often worked in multilingual environments and uh, this uh, translation capability is getting better and better and better. Um, it's nice to see this, uh, this, this push it forward. Microsoft Teams, uh, new Teams meeting pre-join experience. Um, so we've kind of covered this a couple of times. Uh, so Microsoft are improving upon the pre-join meeting experience for Teams meetings. Uh, the new rejoin screen uh, allow, includes easier discovery for audio, video, and device selection configurations before joining a Teams meeting. Uh, if you've ever been on a Teams meeting with me, then you'll know that that's one of my biggest challenges throughout my day, is making sure I have the right devices set. Um, I am the worst person on these meetings, so you know I'm supposed to be the, the technical guy. Uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, spotlight an individual video participant for all attendees in a Teams meeting. Uh, so Microsoft are delivering the ability for presenters to lock on an individual video feed for all attendees to see during a Teams meeting. Once selected, the individual identified as the spotlight will be the main video shown to all participants. And this applies to PC, Mac, mobile and Teams room systems. I don't know what the random question mark is there. Um, hopefully they're not asking a question, but they're telling us what's going on. Microsoft Teams, enable tenant administrators to configure uh, masking of PSTN participant phone numbers. Uh, we discussed this last week as well. So often in a call center, um, uh, people don't want to show the individual's um, number, but maybe a, a centralized call number. So it allows uh, people to do that. Uh, Microsoft Teams, customizable praise badges. Uh, so ability to customize praise badges, the title, colors, images, and language that expresses company culture. Uh, this is good, um, I like these praise badges. Um, it's nice to acknowledge um, success throughout a business. Um, so given uh, quite often these don't actually match what we might want to say. So it's nice that we get the ability to, um, to create our own categories here. That would be very welcome for us. Um, advanced e-discovery, supporting modern attachments from SharePoint Online. Uh, so collect, review, analyze, and export linked content from SharePoint Online in the new user experience. Microsoft Teams, uh, device tagging functionality. So as part of an enhanced manageability, uh, Microsoft are releasing device tagging functionality. It will enable IT admins to group specific set of devices with user-generated tags and perform actions on the same. Um, Aula for iOS, automatic signing and encryption. So user settings uh, to enable all messages to be automatically signed and encrypted using secure mobile internet mail extensions or SMIME. Outlook for Android, automatic signing and encryption, so the same. Outlook for Android, end user options for delegate permissions. So you can extend permissions to have your delegate manage email and calendar events on your behalf by granting permission to read, create, change or delete items in your folders. Colleagues who have uh, delegate permissions can add a delegate mailbox account to Outlook for Android. Uh, same thing for Outlook for iOS. And that's it. And that is all we have on the change list for this week. Um, so a nice quiet week there. We had an awful lot going on last week. Uh, so it's nice to have a little bit of a, a quieter week. Um, and that's everything that's going on. So hopefully now you're better prepared to go and start talking about these new features, decide which ones are important to you, and go and start preparing your users for what's happening on your environment. So um, I will leave you there. We're running oh, a nice call, 18 minutes. That's pretty good. So I hope you enjoy the weekend. Thank you very much. And please do join me again next week. Um, if you find anyone else who um, will find this video interesting, please do share. I really want to get this out to as many people as possible. So please share away, subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff you're supposed to do. Um, and I'd really appreciate it. For now, thank you very much and goodbye.